Hi everyone, Gerard Scarpacy here, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. Super excited, first time for me to get to work with one of the hairdressers that really inspires me and has for years, Mr. Michael Pulsinelli. Thank um, you. We're here at his home studio in Thousand Oaks, California. Um, awesome studio, you can see all this great imagery he's got on the walls and it's just his own like little atelier workshop and mm -hmm. he's invited us in, he's going to be doing a short razor cut which he calls blading which we want to talk about because language is so important on his beautiful model Crystal, say hi Crystal. Hello. Crystal's also <laughs> Michael's uh, personal assistant so she gets to work with him on all of his shows and shoots and events so we'll get to know both of these guys but let's talk to Michael and let's hear a little bit about the technique and the haircut today. Well, well first of all I just want to say hi to everybody and welcome everybody to my home and my studio here um, but uh, yeah so today I just want to come from the perspective of just really just working in the salon um, I'm all about technique more than anything and you know Crystal here wants to grow her hair out a little bit on top and she wants to grow from something of a, of a, of a mullet, I guess, let's just say. So, just like, like I said, you know, working in the salon, you, you have to, sometimes you don't have to do a complete haircut, you know, you don't have to, you know, completely change everything. Sometimes you just need to kind of go in and reassess what's happening and, you know, just give it a little bit of love and just, you know, just kind of change it up just a little bit as you go. So I'm going to just change it up a little bit, but not, nothing too crazy. But like I said, for me today is really about, you know, technique. So what I'm doing right now is a technique called blading over comb. And it's the same principle of, you know, scissor over comb. But, you know, you're just using, you're just using the blade and you're, you're just sweeping across horizontally and moving that comb just as you would with the scissor. And working your way up to that, you know, so it's kind of like a little bit of an undercut. All right, awesome. I just want to pop in here. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Kelly. I'm coming in from behind the camera. Hope, thanks, everyone, for joining us, uh, especially SciShow. Welcome, everyone. So we've got people watching from all over the world, Michael. Oh, you're fantastic. Yeah. And uh, guys, give us a shout out. Let us know where you're watching from. We are, if you're just joining us, we're in Thousand Oaks, Thousand Oaks California, yeah. which is... Uh, there's been some fires here recently, yeah. and I was going to ask Michael because his house is right here. Yeah. If that came close to you, or could you could you actually see the fire? Yeah, we could definitely see the fires from here. Um, we actually had to be evacuated uh, Thursday evening, and that was uh, that was pretty scary. That was uh, a real uh, sort of eye opener. And when you have two small kids, you don't want to take any chances. So we packed up and uh, and we moved out of here. Well, we're glad you were all safe. Yeah, and thank honestly, you. Honestly, guys, as we were driving up from L.A. up here, it's about an hour north of L.A., give or take, we could see whole, like, hillsides yeah. burnt down and trees. And you know what? If it's something, you know, you might be sitting out there wondering, what can I do? You know, there is the PBA Disaster Relief Fund. It's for the professional beauty industry. Mm -hmm. Any hairdressers that maybe lost their salon or can't go to work, they can apply to the uh, Professional Beauty Industry Disaster Relief Fund, or you can donate. So just as a side note, since we were here, I thought I would mention it. But let's get back into the haircutting. So obviously you've chosen what you call the blade. I love yeah, that. Yeah. You know, language is so important. I mean, it's a razor. Like, why blade? Is that just like a word that resonates more for you? You know, George, you know, just working around the world, um, for some reason, you know, the razor has always had somewhat of a negative connotation to it and it's as we both know it's not it's not the tool you know to me it's always the hand you know yeah. it doesn't matter what it is um, but you know if you know like I said technique is everything and if you don't really have your technique down uh, properly you know you're not going to be able to oh look look at that um, always such a good assistant that's my role <laughs> amazing thank I you I get to learn from the best as long as I can keep their models clean absolutely I think you know that's really interesting because I was thinking about on the on the drive up here why you call it the blade versus the razor and I was also thinking about asking you because you uh, are a big razor cutter and it's yeah. something that I love to do like yeah. you know why you think there's so much fear around razor cutting or the blade well you know I like I said I just I, I think that it's like anything. I mean, you have to practice. It's an amazing tool. I mean, it's very, very liberating. As you know, you love using the, the razor as well. But it's very, very uh, liberating. And it just takes 
somebody to do one haircut that just didn't go down so well. And, you know, and then off you go. It starts, uh, it starts having a, you know, a negative sort of it, connotation. It's an interesting one, though, because, you know, like how many clients have had bad scissor haircuts? Yeah, yeah. And they never say, don't use a scissor again, you know? Yeah. It's like, don't blame the razor, blame the hairdresser. Well, that's yeah. just it, you know? Um, and anybody that's taken my classes, um, they know that I'm, you know, I'm a big stickler on... On technique, so I really believe that if you if you really learn your technique really well, then you can you can move left and right and you know pretty much go where you want to go uh, within the haircut. But I think the word blade sounds so much cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't sound um, as aggressive. So you know, in the salon when I'm doing consultations and things like that, um, I, I, use, I use language that really makes clients feel a lot more comfortable. I so totally that knew there was like a reason in that, you know, because you seem like a very deliberate person and yeah. how you do things. Now, you've got tons of love coming in here. Oh, yay. Uh, David Coates is saying, hello, Michael. Can't wait hey, to see David. you in Iceland. Ah. Yeah, because uh, that's something super exciting for yeah. you over the past year. Yeah. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, Michael started working with Davines. Yes. Um, and you know, Hairbrain and Davines, we have a long relationship of sharing education through these HB Lives. And that's why we've been so excited. We've had Michael once before, but I wasn't able to host. Yeah. So here, here I am. Um, What's it like now for you working with Davines? I know you've got kind of a role like as a guest artist. What are some of the things that you've got going on? I, I see you're going to be at the Worldwide Hair Tour. Yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. That'll be my first one. Um, so far, I've, I've uh, been fortunate enough to do a hair on stage in Vancouver, and that was pretty cool. So, but, you know, Davines is, is, a, is a really, really unique company. Um, of course, anybody that's uh, indoctrinated into Davenis really understands what it's about and it's really about, uh, you know, taking care of this planet, sustainability, um, you know, all these amazing things that we need to sort of implement a lot more, especially in the world that we're living in today. Yeah. So for me, it was a perfect fit because like I said, I have two little children, um, you know, I want them to have a planet as well when they get older and their children and so on. So you know, it was just a perfect fit, you know, when it comes to, you know, matters of the heart. You know, artistically, I really love what Davin stands for because they really celebrate the hairdresser. Um, and they really allow you to just be you, you know, and just do the things that, you know, that make you happy and be part of an amazing team and an amazing fa uh, family. And they just help you celebrate that. And that's super important for someone like me. Um, that really enjoys the art aspect of what it is that we do in this industry. So, yeah, it was just, for me, it was just an amazing fit, you know? It was just an amazing fit. So, some more love coming in from Stuart Kimber. This guy is next level. Absolutely love Michael's work. Been following him for years now, so it's great to hear. Thank you. You've got a lot of, a lot of big fans here. Steve Kim. Yo, Michael, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> now we've got a question coming in from Catherine Lincoln. Hi, Catherine. Are you just using the tip of the blade over the comb, or do you use the whole blade? I'm actually using the middle of the blade. The middle yeah, of the blade. Yeah, I'm just going to clean her off for a second. But yeah, I'm using the middle of the blade. <laughs> Sorry. I'm using the middle of the blade because um, you can, it, it, you just have that little bit more space in between. And I always, when I'm doing things like this, like blading over comb, I really like to work in the middle because you have more room to sort of move within the surface of that blade. Now if I'm going to be a little bit more specific or if I'm going to uh, maybe be a little bit more like what I'm doing right now, I'm using the tip of the blade. So really to get that kind of petered yeah. out effect on the hairline, yeah, which and can be so difficult to get. Yeah, and you know, so if you, if you want to be more deliberate then yes, I would, you know, you want to detail, detailing I use the the, I call it the toe of the blade. So for me, it's the middle, it's the toe, the heel, uh, the middle, and, and the heel of the blade. So that's how I kind of break this little tool down. It seems like the hair is basically dry here. So what's your theory on like wet razor, dry razor? How do you choose? Well, um, you know, I kind of start from damp to dry. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a problem, you know, sort of re damping the hair, but. You get a totally different feel with the blade when it's on dry hair and then when it's on damp hair. 
when it's on dry hair, you're going to catch that hair a little bit more because right. obviously there's less slip. A little bit of tug, a yeah. little chunkiness. Yeah. And all I have in here right now is just uh, the day day. So um, I've so just sprayed that a, in there right now. As a cutting lotion as when cutting you're lotion, laying, yeah. you like to use the day day? Yeah. Now if I'm doing like a bob or something like that, then what I'll do is I'll use the oil non-oil or I'll use the oil oil itself. So it's a different technique. But on this specific technique, I want to feel that hair underneath the blade so that I, I know what I'm cutting. And what this actually does is the surface has a very, very soft velour kind of feel to it. Whereas if you're doing scissor over comb, you can see that there's a lot more sharpness to it, there's a lot more bluntness to it. And this just gives it that um, lived in feel, if you will. So I'm a big fan of when I'm cutting hair, I want it to feel like it's, it's lived in. I don't want it to look like, you know, you just got a haircut. So that's one of the things of how I cut within the salon. And, you know, I cut like this in the salon all the time. So it's very, it's very, very normal for me. I'm not, I guess you would say, a conventional hairdresser because I really like to play with um, all the tools. I even, you know, I love using the blending shears as well. And, you know, people call them you know, the fitting shears, 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 or whatever you want to call them. But I, I call it, once again, you know, it's a play on words. I call it a blending shear because I cut that way. I don't just use it to thin hair out. I don't like to. All the really, you know, creative people that I get a chance to work with, they're so deliberate about the words yeah. and the names and, you know, because those words have so much power, so it's great to hear your whole philosophy. Let's hear a little bit more about your background. You know, I, I know, obviously, all this incredible work I saw, but how did you start off as a hairdresser? Like, someone out there is watching and go, okay, this guy's an icon, he's done all this incredible creative work, he's got this, you know, how did they get there? How did you start your career? You know, I, mine is a, is a, is a very sort of um, normal story. I come from a, you know, a, my, my background is Italian, so I have mom and dad that, you know, are in the business, and oh, okay. that's how I started. I started helping mom and dad in the salon when I was in- In Toronto? In Toronto. Or in Toronto, yeah. So, so family salon in Toronto. Family salon, that's how we started. My brother's a hairdresser, Anthony Polsnelli, who works with Dabs as well, and he's amazing. Um, he's on my team, and he has his, he does his own thing as well for himself, so he's a, he's a talented guy. So I'm very fortunate I got to you know, grow up having a sounding board. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you know, I moved, um, I was kind of shipped off to California after a while because um, I took on another job, another responsibility, and I ended up here because, you know. And you've been in California now for 20 years, been, so. Yeah, I've been in California you, since. You don't miss those Toronto winters? I tell you what, I'm going you back. you got to choose wildfire or Yeah, I'm going snow. back, I'm going back in a couple of days, uh, or actually a couple oh, of weeks. So, up. Oh, yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little a taste of uh, Canadian winters, but um, yeah, so. You know, anybody that's, that's, that has a story um, also needs, I mean, they'll, they'll tell you, you, know, you have to be at the right place at the right time. You've got to kind of make that situation happen for you. Um, you've got to, you know, you've got to be a go-getter. And I'll tell you what, you, you need a lot of luck too. Yeah. You know, and I don't, I, you know, I, I don't care what anybody says, you know. If you've got luck on your side, that's, that's a great thing to have. And, and, and relationships. Yeah. You know, finding those right mentors that are going to put you on the right track. And Absolutely. My career really started um, when I met Robert Labetta. So um, he took me under his wing and, um, I don't know, he just, he had this sort of blind faith in me and believed in me and uh, allowed me to have, um, a, you know, a form to really sort of grow and express myself. But let me tell you, it was a lot, <laughs> it was a lot of practice, a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the best mentors are, are tough, right? Oh, yeah. It's not just all about hugs and kisses and telling oh, how great you are. Oh, no. Anybody that knows Robert, you know, knows that, uh, you know, he likes, he likes the, you know, the best of the best. And he's got amazing, he's got amazing taste. So he really helped me sort of be cultured in that creative aspect and, and really finding myself creatively. So if you're just joining us, uh, we're here for HV Live. We, Michael Pulsinelli's been kind enough to invite us into his own working studio, which is attached to his home. He's got some great inspiration board behind him here, and he's working on his beautiful assistant, Crystal. Say hi, Crystal. Hi. Crystal's getting uh, bladed. 
you know, which is the way Michael describes his razor cutting. And I, I love that idea of saying, you know, so many people have a negative connotation of the word razor, why not just use another word? Yeah. So that's a great one if you're wondering where the blade it comes from. Now you've got fans all over the world that are just, you know, it's hard to even keep up with all the love that's coming oh, in. Oh that's amazing. You yeah. Know? I'm always amazed that, you know, that people that follow you, you know, I just, you always think, oh, you know, but, um, I think, you know, in our industry, it's kind of a unique combination to be nice, humble, extremely talented, and have, like, stage presence, and I, I've always found that you have that. Oh, thank Some you. people have one or the other more, but to have all of that and to actually come off like a nice, warm person is, you know, can be a challenge. Well, listen, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. I think that you've always got to keep yourself checked. You know, you got to keep yourself checked in, because if you don't... You lose touch with, uh, with what's going on, and I'm, I'm all about... Before you drop that top down, let's just get one nice yeah. look at the underneath. It's beautiful, you know, and if you're just joining us, you can see that uh, this was all cut down razor over comb or blade over comb, and it's just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, lived in and beautiful. Yeah, so it's nice and soft. So you're getting that very, very soft surface texture, and that's what I want. I want that really soft, I guess, you know, velour kind of feel to it. And you can still move it around, which is good, because when you apply product to it after, it's, it still moves. Um, so that's, that's... Here's a great question. Before you even move on to the top, yeah. how do you work on napes that have, like, a tricky hairline? Could you give any, like, in this case, I mean, crystals is it, actually quite beautiful. It's not bad. Way to go, girl. If you think about it, though, like, when you push it, it still, it still works, but her growth pattern actually grows in. So, you know, I just work with it. If it wants to go a certain way, I go with it. But if I, you know, obviously when you're going shorter like this, you know, bleeding over comb, you can go a little shorter and you can sort of, uh, you know, rectify that, that problem area. So you can go really, really short up against the skin or you can, you know, get in there with the blade and just kind of, just break it apart and deconstruct the strength. That's, yeah, that's one of the things about the you know? blade, the razor, is that you can, take out the will of the hair. Yeah. So if the hair is really thick and clean and goes in one direction, yeah. by kind of going against it, you can take out that calic or that jump. It just takes a lot of practice. Yeah, it does. Yep. Uh, but I always, you know, I always say, don't really fight Mother Nature too much, because <laughs> she usually wins. But sometimes there is that, that time when you want to, you want to, you, you really want to fight Mother Nature because it actually works for you instead of against you, especially if you want root direction or whatever it is that you're, you know, really trying to work towards. Kimberly Unger is wondering what razor you use and what razor you prefer. I use the feather blade. I've been using the feather blade for about, oh, geez, I would say, I would say about 28 years now. So I fell in love with this little tool because um, I started off with. Um, you know, straight razor, and um, I just happened to pick this up one day. I don't know, it was in the salon or something. And I thought, well, this just is show it to the camera real quick for people. Oh, that yeah, are. Go for it. So this is uh, it's the feather styling razor, and if you are interested in this, uh, we do have them on hairbrain.pro. Yes, you do. Yeah. And we sell the replacement ding. blades. Um, and yeah, this is definitely the most popular. You have blade silver ones on there too. We have silver yeah. and pink and yeah. blue and black. I know, because I bought my last one on Hairbrain. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the support. Of course. <laughs> yeah. We, we can make that work. Our yeah. buddy Frank Mussolino says you're looking like Trent Reznor these days. <laughs> I know, everybody that's seen me in a while said, they all say, how did you help your hair grow so bloody fast? I just, my hair does grow pretty quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. So we're getting up into the top now on Crystal's cut after that beautiful blade over comb undercut. Mm -hmm. Dropping down the top. So what are you thinking? What's the approach going to be? So I'm liking this length in the back. Crystal said, you know, can I keep the length in the back? I said, yeah, of course. So I'm working with what she wants as well. So we're going to try and keep this as much as possible. And we're going to shorten this up into the sides and into the front. So it's going to go a little shorter and a little you know, to long. So that's what we're going to do on both sides. And then what we'll do is through the middle, as we're going through the middle, we're going to uh, release a little bit of weight and um, you know, take, you know, take a little bit short and work with like a peeling uh, technique. So here we go. So I'm going to come into the side section now. And I'm going to use another technique, and that's called skimming. All right? So skimming is working in the middle of the blade and keeping that blade very, very flat. 
on that hair, that panel of hair. Because as soon as you, you know, that's where the whole distinction comes. Sometimes when you come off the hair at, you know, perpendicular or at a 45 degrees, that's when you can start to kind of create a little bit of surface texture. It's a nice way of saying damage. Yeah, we were talking earlier and, and um, you were mentioning that you, you have like over 27 different techniques in your cutting system. Yeah, I think it's techniques? 22 or something 22? like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just something, you know, skimming was the first technique that I, that I learned. And then I said, well, hey, you know, what else can we do with this blade? So I started playing with this over the years and yeah, I developed a whole bunch of techniques with it. And it's just a lot of fun. So what I love about, like I said, like what I love about this is the fact that it really gives me alternatives. So you can see you're getting that nice, soft, filtered edge, and that's what I want. And so, I, can, I can take this all down in one, you know, in one section because obviously there's not a lot of hair in the Yeah, with the there. undercut. Yeah. And, so let's talk about pressure because as you're doing that, it's a good question. you really have to think about how hard you're pressing yeah. the blade against the hair. Yeah. So it all depends. The more pressure you apply, the faster you're going to get through that panel of hair. The less pressure you get, the longer it takes you to get to it, obviously, but you also have a little bit more control. Now, does it help with something like this to have a little bit of like a prep spray, like the day day in the absolutely, hair? Absolutely, absolutely, because what it does is it allows so that, slip. yeah, it allows that blade to just glide across the surface, and that's what you want. You know, you want you want something to aid that blade uh, and make your life and your job a lot easier. You know, because that's that's super important. So some love coming in from our friend Leon Gorman, who's another incredible hairdresser. I don't know if you hey, guys have Leon. had a chance to work together. I know. He's an incredible editorial hairdresser. Beautiful, beautiful work. And he's sending his love, so oh, he's enjoying you. this. Thank you, thank you. You know, it's just amazing um, what you guys have done because even for myself, you know, I... You're always watching, which is awesome. I, I, I'm always I love, like, yeah. And I, I, I always like, talk, Michael Pulsinelli's watching you right now. And everyone's like, what? Really? I just yeah. love, you know, I just love watching the way everybody does their thing, you know, and everybody's so different. And that's what's so great about this industry. I really, you know, I really don't believe there's a, a right, a right and a wrong way, shall we say, when it comes to creativity. You know, so everybody has their own way of, of expressing themselves. I mean, you know, obviously there's rights and wrongs and, we need to um, sort of learn the right ways before we can kind of deconstruct. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. You, you know, you had to learn some basics Absolutely. in the beginning of your career to get to the stage you're at now. Absolutely. But then you kind of have to forget them along the way. Right? You know? <laughs> well, you know, some, some, like I love watching like Sassoon cutters. They're mm -hmm. so you know, precise and so beautiful. And um, as I, beautiful, love, as I love cutting like that, you know. But at the same time, <laughs> I, I really love just... You know, just moving throughout a haircut, um, and just just with technique, and you know, maybe using two or three or four different techniques to a haircut because I, I do that quite a bit. I use quite a bit, you know, quite a few different techniques as I'm working through. All right. So now coming back to the second side with skimming. Yeah. So so far we've seen blade over comb. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing skimming. Mm -hmm. And you know, do you find it challenging to control the exact length with this? Does that take a bit of practice? It does. So because you, know, you can just go, whoa, oh, wait a yeah, minute, you know? Yeah. So you know, this is all on practice and feel. So sorry, man, I just. But you know, feel just knowing when you really sort of understand this tool and how it works. So I'm going to turn you this way because my hands in the way. Um, well, a lot of love coming in for Crystal. I don't know, Crystal, if you're single, but there are a lot you of got mad love. girls and guys saying how pretty you are. And I was going to mention how cute your ears are, too. It's coming in, coming in great. I know, she's got cute little ears. They're perfect. It makes a Those things are important when you cut hair short, right? It's yeah. going to be totally exposed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there was another technical question that uh, came in from, I believe it was Kimberly Unger. Mm -hmm. uh, how often do you like to change your blade? So I love working with a really sharp blade. Thank you. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, I, um, you know, when you, it, it just, it's just, it takes too long. It's just too much work, you know. And also, hey, it's just hard to judge. If it it's is hard sharp. to judge. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing too is you want you want clean, beautiful lines, you know, whether, whether they're horizontal or whether they're vertical. You want that beautiful. I'll say, as someone you know, like yourself, who's taught a lot of people razor cutting, mm -hmm. I, one of the biggest challenges that they have is changing their blade 
and they use dull blades and then they damage the hair because they push too hard, they get too aggressive. Exactly. You know, so for me, I go out on a limb. I like a new blade for every haircut. I do in that sense. I so, sometimes okay. I'll do two. Right, <laughs> two blades and one haircut. Yeah, sometimes yeah. I okay. do two, depending on you know obviously the thickness and the texture of the hair. Because sometimes that texture can be you know, pretty strong. It just yeah, it, it really out. wears that blade down. And you know what? So what? You know, it's it's uh, it's part of doing business. You know, so you gotta you know, keep those blades really really super sharp. Now, what about um, tension when you're cutting with the razor? Do you feel like you need a lot of tension on the hair? Are you a little bit looser? So it it depends on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Everything is subject to what it is that I'm doing. Sometimes, like right now, I'm not using a lot of tension. Or you know the holding hand is the tension hand, so uh, I'm just letting that as I'm sort of pushing with my blade. I'm kind of pushing and I'm letting that hair just fall out of my hand, and I'm just working with where I'm going with this with this line right now. So, um, but yeah, you know, it's 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 both working together, tension and pressure. Now, I love the way the color here is melting too. It's got that yeah. very kind of 80s where the blonde melts yeah. into the brown. And Absolutely. Yeah, the razor can do that like no other tool. So we want to give a shout out to Brooke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that a good color? <laughs> Brooke yeah. Bedford. Brooke yes. Bedford, thank you for this gorgeous color. Yeah, she, she worked, yeah. It's, That's her? BB yes. Alchemy, yes. Yeah. So you guys can check her out on that. She's, she's a trip. And she was so gracious in doing this for me yesterday. So a shout out to Brooke. Thank you, Brooke, so much. So guys, if you're watching from home, I want to say thank you. And we are here with Michael Polsonelli in Thousand Oaks. This is his private studio attached to his house. And he was kind enough to welcome us in to, to film this HB Live. Um, doing this beautiful short haircut using the blade. And... We want to thank our sponsor, Davinez, for the ongoing support here and helping us bring you this great education, you know, a few times a month. Um, and say how excited we are to see that Michael is now working with Davinez because it's two things that we love coming together. We've always been fans of Michael's work and his creative genius. And of course, Davinez is, you know, one of our sponsors and has been for a long time and they mm -hmm. enable us to be able to do this. So for us, it's like... Touchdown! Yeah. <laughs> so you're coming around into the front again? Yeah, so all I'm really doing is I'm just connecting those two sides. So I've done both sides. So I know I'm going to roughly about the top of the ear. And then once I come to this sort of U-shape, or sort of, yeah, I guess a U-shape, I can decide on how short I want to, you know, make that connection. So if I want to leave it a little bit longer, I can. Or if I want to go a little shorter, I can as well. So it also depends on how much... I want that hair to move up on top when I kind of flip it up and over after. I saw earlier in the comments um, someone from PSC hey, Zach. Gave, gave a shout out. Now, you've done, done some classes uh, this year at PSC? I, you know what? I've done classes everywhere and I can't remember <laughs> where yeah, I've been, but I'm right, sure I have. Yeah, right outside of Chicago, yeah. uh, great education center outside of Chicago. I think this year I was there like a week after you or something. Oh, is that there. right? Michael Polsonelli was just here. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And they, they're great people. So yeah. do you have a lot of classes on the calendar for 2019? Yeah, so far so good. I've uh, been getting quite a few requests already coming in for 2019, which is uh, pretty amazing. It's always, it's always nice that people want to see you again the year after. Uh, your, your classes, from what I understand, a little bit more intimate kind of experience. Like, I, yeah. You, you like to work with a smaller group and a bit more closely. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it can be a little bit of a big group. Sometimes they're like in between 16 and 20. But... Um, I really love the intimacy of the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I just feel that that's when I can really make that connection and really, uh, you know, really get into people's heads. You know. I think Olivia Cunningham is wondering if you've been doing Olivia. anything in the UK. No, no, no. I have not. I haven't done anything in the UK as of as of yet. All right. So. Well, we need to find some uh, great opportunities in the UK. All I right. Know. So moving on to another another approach now through the top. Yeah. So I'm just having a look here and. and feeling what I'm going to be doing here so I just want to see as I'm working through the back so uh, did it was that kind of like putting in an outline and now you're thinking about yeah, internally yeah, yeah. so I, it's just keeping it really simple you know um, yeah it's 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 creative way of sort of um, working through it but at the same time there has to be some kind of rhyme you know, there has to be a method to madness you know so I think that that's really really important I'm just going to spin it around this way so that way you can see the side profile so I'm just gonna work right now, just right through the center here. And I'm gonna work, I'm gonna switch it up again. So I'm gonna come into it 
another technique calling the, called the peeling technique. Right, so now I'm going to flip over. I'm going to come in vertically with my blade, okay? And it's just basically applying pressure with my thumb. Now uh, I've never seen anyone do it quite that way. People usually come in horizontally, yeah, and go like across it. Yeah. This makes a lot more sense for me. So you can see, so you can see all these little soft bits. You can see, especially on my black shirt, you can really see it. Um, I like and, that. And it's a very, very cool technique. So you're basically, you know, layering hair right now. But right. You're, so you're pressing your thumb lightly against the guard right, exactly. to make some tension, and then the blade just pops through. Exactly. But you know, I, I'm sure you've seen people do it much more horizontally and aggressively, yeah. well, which I guess it has its place if you want to take a lot more off. Yes. That's the thing with the blade. I always tell, you know, when I'm teaching the blade, even at work or, you know, whoever's using the blade around me, I always say, you know, be very sort of charismatic with the blade. It's like, you, it's almost like belly in your hand. If you're very aggressive with the tool like this, it's going to look kind of scary. But if you, you know, if you're really applying the technique and the tool with, you know, grace, it looks beautiful, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know if you're familiar with Lee, St uh, Lee Clapson, but he's a great razor cutter from Philadelphia. Yeah. And he's, you know, when he talks about these, it, like, it's like, think of like holding a butterfly. Yeah. You know, like everything else That's, is, yeah, you can't say you can't like gr grab it or squeeze it. You got to be like gentle with yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so I'm all about, you know, when you're applying a technique or anything like that, you have to be very sort of gentle. And you're also working on a human being. You know, so uh, you want you yeah. want to be very very delicate. And back to the dull blade thing. I mean, I think that's why some clients maybe didn't enjoy razor cuts because if someone does a dull blade, it actually yeah. hurts. Yeah. So you know, if the hair's a little dry and the blade's a little dull, it hurts, yeah. and then they have it, they think of it as something that was painful. Well, and it shouldn't because I mean, if you ask Crystal right now if you can feel me, you know, working through the hair. Yeah. You can't feel it, right? It's because yeah. the blade is sharp and the, the hair is sharply yeah. saturated with the day day mess. Yeah. You can hear it more than feel it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and once again, I'm just using the tip of the blade on this one. And I'm working obviously from the center out towards the sides, and I'm pulling everything straight up on the head. Now, do you ever work with the unguarded blade, or do you always prefer to work? Uh... You know, I'll leave that to you because you're a master at that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, usually it's uh, I'm always working with the feather blade, and you know, but my whole education system is all. You know, As I'm watching, I feel like I want to do more with the garden. I never, I'm not like a, a negative about it, but it's just like I, I fell in love with the straight edge razor right out of Sassoon just yeah. because it, it seems so dangerous and difficult to do <laughs> that I never really spent a lot of time using this type of razor, I'll be honest with you. Like you've probably done five haircuts with this kind of razor. Yeah. But as I watch you, I'm like, I, I want to do a little bit more of this. Thank you. That, yeah. that makes me feel good. Yeah, Especially sure. coming from you, Gerard. Well, this technique that you're doing right now, because I've always seen people come in so flat with the razor and do this. Yeah. And it's always freaked me out. But what you're doing right now, I could use that every day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So now it all depends. If you're coming in, you know, if you're coming in at an angle, you're going to notch that hair up. Right. A lot more. And if you're going to come in more at a vertical, which more you're, getting, gentle. you're getting that seamlessness to it. Right. So you're just getting that really um, seamless layering going through it. You're not going to see it as much. Whereas if you come in a little bit more horizontally or on an angle, it's much. It's going to be a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, it so, makes me even feel like I'd, I'd want to do some combinations of you know for myself doing some stuff with the straight edge and then some stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. That's important. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, like I said, you know, when I'm watching you guys you're using those um, straight edge razors, you guys are, you guys make those things sing, so. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely c certain things that it's great for, but like what you're doing right now, it's not great for that, like elevating and <laughs> getting that kind of an angle. Yeah, you might use a few digits along yeah, the way as well. So. Totally. Yeah, so we want, we want to keep all our digits when we need them. So I'm just working to the side right now. So again, lots of love coming in from all over the world. We've got uh, Sarah watching from Milwaukee. Hi, Sarah. We have our good buddy Sasha watching. I'm assuming he's in the UK right now. Uh, we've got people everywhere. Let us know where you're watching from, guys. We love to uh, 
you know, we love to see who's watching, what you guys are thinking. And of course, if you have any questions for Michael, I mean, I have tons, obviously, but... Yeah, ask questions, guys, have guys, questions. questions, because sometimes, you know, when you're, when you're working here, things tend to slip my mind, so... Yeah, any technical questions about cutting? And so now you, you have a system, you call it you call it fusion? Yeah, I call it fusion haircutting methodology and fusion design. So I have the two different aspects of what I do with my work. So, you know, obviously cutting hair and, you know, the creative side that I do. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, as much as this haircut is beautiful and wonderful, it's like when I think about Michael Polsonelli, I think about some of these incredible silhouettes of... I, I don't know if you call them hair pieces or what the proper terminology is, but these things that you build yeah. that are really like art, art that you, and I've seen that so many years, I've been, see you do things on stage and I'm like, wow, that's just otherworldly. Well, so let's talk about that. I mean, it's just something, once again, that's something that I fell into with uh, Robert, you know, so he really allowed me to really play and um, really discover myself and that, that, that side of me that I knew that I was, that was always there, but it just really knew, didn't know how to get it out. So I was very, very, very fortunate that I had that platform to kind of work that way. But can yeah. Kelly poke around the, with the camera for a minute and show some of this? Or? Show that one. Those show ones are, haven't been seen yet, so those ones we can't show those ones. So but guys at home, if you're you wondering, you can pick that one up if you want. Yeah. Even if you look up that way, Kelly, you can see up there. This is what I'm talking about. These are the things that you know, Michael's. You know so renowned for building these incredible structures, incredible design, and it's a, you know, so this is all like grading that you've done, and then yeah, you've it's on a, the it's on a metal frame, and it's just hair put into place, like piece by piece by piece, it's enough to just make you want to start drinking. Yeah, I mean, but it shows you have a true, true love for this, to, I mean, how many hours does it take to do something like this? The longest piece I've ever done, I think, took me three months. Oh, yeah, I'm working. That, I'm working on this new collection, and the first one took me, uh, I would say, probably almost two months because I took it apart about seven times. So to come up with you know something like that, I mean, it sounds like you have to be really honest with yourself. Like yeah. you're working, and if it's not great, you start over. Yeah, you know, you have to because um, you know, being anything with creativity, cutting hair, whatever it is. It, there's a journey there, um, and you've got to learn your methodology. You've got to learn you, um, and once you figure out how you work and you know what works for you and what doesn't, it, then and only then, you know, it, it makes it a lot easier to sort of get to where you want to go creatively. But you've got you've got to learn about yourself. You've got to learn your own process and your own methodology, um, and you know everybody's methodology is different. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. There's just your way. You know, so that's the most important thing that I, I stress all the time when I'm talking about creativity and then when I'm, you know, you know, working with other hairdressers and I'm teaching seminars. So I love this comment coming in from Tanya Ledbetter. Uh, she's from Kentucky, first of all. She says, hi, y'all. Hi, Kentucky. I love, I love razor cutting. It changes a haircut into a creation. <laughs> that's Very a nice... Good. Uh, that's very nice. You know, because it is, you know, it's just so much feeling and emotion that goes, it, obviously you have to have the technique here, but you're really sculpting away. Yeah, I, you know, I really, like I said, I'm, some, I, I can be very unconventional, and I know that, so, um, but at the same time, um, you've really got to, you've got to feel, you, a lot of times I'm cutting here and I'm feeling my way through it, you know, so... And I, you know, and you move it, you move it around, you see what looks good, what doesn't look good. Does that need to stay there or does it need to go away? And that's just all, that's, that's just all a matter of preference. You process know? of elimination. Yeah, process of elimination yeah. and just really understanding where you want to go with it. So, Crystal, you've had a lot of love for your beautiful face, but let's talk about um, you. You're actually Michael's assistant. Yes, I am. And how did you get that? How did, you know, again, so just asking for the people that are out there, they're like, wow, that would be my dream to... She stopped me. <laughs> How did you do it? She totally stalked me. She won't tell you that, but she totally stalked me. <laughs> she likes to think I stalked him. <laughs> but uh, no, we, I would see him at shows um, that he attended and, or that he would put on in the past. And then one day, um, I was working for another gentleman across the street that we work at. And we just decided to hop over because we like him so much and are so inspired by him. And then next thing I knew, he was looking for an assistant. And I was like, me, 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 me. <laughs> so I guess I kind of stalked him. 
So what, kind of, <laughs> what, what kind of things are you doing for, for Michael as his assistant? Um, well, I assist him in the salon um, during the week, and then when we travel, doing classes for education, I help him there, and then I'll be uh, helping him on uh, in Iceland. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. yeah, so for those of you guys watching at home, that's a, that's a big thing. Uh, it's going to be in May. It's called the Worldwide Hair Tour. It's kind of like a global gathering of all the... Um, tribe that work with Davines and use Davines from around the, around the world and all the top artists and this year Michael Bolsonelli is going to be there on stage presenting and it sounds like Crystal's going to be going. Yeah. Uh, Hairbrain will I'm be gonna there. Are you going to be there? Yeah, we wouldn't it's miss it for the yeah. world and I've never been to Iceland before yeah. so I'm excited. I haven't been either. She yeah. just got back from Iceland last week. Yeah, really? yeah. yeah. I went for vacation and then awesome. I'm going. Awesome. So do you highly recommend it? I do. Okay, I awesome. Like all right, now you mentioned, uh, I, I didn't, you know, I kept hearing you mention the salon, but I wasn't sure you still worked behind the chair. Yeah. So you did. Yeah, you know, I just, I just think, you know, um, it gives you another dimension, I think, when you teach. Yeah, I still work behind the chair. Yeah, you do? Yeah, people are always surprised. I like to do. Where do you find the time? Uh, I, Thursdays <laughs> from 4 to 8 p.m. <laughs> it, it's usually because if I travel, it's up from a Friday to a Monday yeah. or a Wednesday. Yeah. Most Thursdays, I'm home in New York City, so I'm able to work by the oh, chair. Oh, that's awesome. And I, I just have the same 50 clients I've been doing. Right. Like, they, they stalk me. You yeah. know, they text me. Okay. and I yeah. love them, and I've been cutting their hair for a long time. But let's hear about your, your experience well, I just, the chair. You know, I think working behind the chair um, keeps those hands moving. Um, it keeps you in touch with reality, um, and you know, real every life, everyday life, you know, people and and things that you need to always constantly uh, assess. So I think that that's a bonus when you're out teaching um, seminars because there's a relatability there. You have to be relatable. It's hard to be relatable when you're not doing what they're doing. You know what I mean? So. I think that the, there's that connection there, and that connection is really important for other hairdressers as well. But not only for the, but for me, you know, for me as well. I think that that's really important. That connection is, is yeah. super I'm important. I'm glad to hear it because I feel the same way. It's like, how can you really teach your fellow hair? You know, because you get so disconnected yeah. from what it's like to really work behind the chair. Yeah, so, do you have, you know, just regular bobs that come in, or do you? You know, being this like creative uh, master is everything a unique creation, or do you still have? I keep it simple in the salon. Yeah. That's why I tell everybody: keep it simple in the salon. You're not there to be, uh, you know, Picasso. You're there to, uh, you know, basically people are are hiring your hands and expertise and experience to really sort of, you know, make them feel good and look good about, you know about themselves. So I think that that's really important. Uh, when I first started in the industry... So you're in the salon just like anyone else you do, a nice simple basic haircut. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, I cut like this in the salon, so I'm very lucky. My clients don't ask me, but they don't tell me. They just sit in my chair and just say... Well, I, I think it's the same. I think sometimes hairdressers just assume that. Like, you know, like they put themselves, like I've never had anyone tell me what tool to use or how to cut their hair either. Yeah. But I think some hairdressers just have like this nervousness about it. And, you know, yeah. when it comes to picking up the razor, they're, they're like afraid to pick it up because, oh, what if they don't like razor cuts? You know, what's funny is I practiced on all my clients when I was younger and they had no idea I was doing it. I was just, you know, when you're young, you just have... Try anything. <laughs> you just have that... Uh, you know that desire to just kind of keep moving forward. You don't worry, you don't really worry too much about it. But you know today might be a little bit of a different story. Anyways, I'm just coming through this top now. I'm working horizontally across the top, and you can see I'm just slicing with the tip of the blade. Yeah, and that's exactly panel. what I call it with the straight razor as well. Yeah. So yeah, I've seen so what we've seen the blade over comb. Yeah. We've seen skimming. Yeah. We've seen peeling, slicing. So. I love that you know each one of these little things has its own, and it does something different to the texture. Absolutely, of absolutely. So you really, you know, you just I just pull out of that you know the twenty two uh, technique arsenal and just uh, apply it to you know specific on what I want uh, my desired look to be. So so here's a question that comes in very very frequently with people working with the blade or the razor. What are your thoughts about uh, blade on curly hair? I don't have any issues with that. I think there is a time to use a blade and there's a time not to use a blade. Obviously, if uh, you're dealing with hair that's been over-processed and stuff like that, what it needs to, 
what you need to do is you need to kiss that hair with the scissors. Mm -hmm. It needs a beautiful, clean, oh, like that, you know. Because you know. it's just shattered, it's yeah. falling apart. It's already shattered, you need yeah. to shatter it anymore. <laughs> so you actually want to give it some more strength and structure yeah. to it. Um, but I love using it on, on curly hair because what it does is it deconstructs that wave, it deconstructs that curl. And uh, what it does is it gives that curl a, a whole total different dimension, a totally different look. So depending on what it is that you want to create, you know, you're going to you're going to use that technique uh, according to once again what your end result is going to be. So. Kimberly Unger brings up the heated razor. Have you ever tried one of those? No, I haven't. I haven't either. Yeah, I I've actually, heard of it, but I've never. Somebody gave me one, and I have it in a in a drawer somewhere, but I never tried it. Um, I'd have to keep that away from my kids. Yeah, hot hot and a razor. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I know that some people love it because I, I think that you can cut dry hair with it and it slides yeah. through because of the heat. But next time I'll bring one over and we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll give it a try. He's like, he's great. Who knows what I do with that? All right, so we've gone a little shorter up into the top. We've taken those sides, that length in the side, and we've kept this little back, this little sort of tail in the back. So let's get a little bit of movement up here, move that around, and once again, just kind of have that sort of top little mullet going there. So here's a question with this again, you know, since it's more emotional and free form, how do you know when you're done? You know, like if you're doing a square layer after you cut the last section, you're like, okay, it's a square layer. Yeah. But with this, how do you know when you're done and when to stop? Um, it's a visual thing. And, and, it's, and it's, I cut for shape. Um, it's, this is more like perfectly imperfect. Do you know what I mean? So I'm cutting for shape. And if it feels right, you know, everything kind of like matches up as I'm going through it. But the body and the shape looks really, really good. And if it's reacting to what I wanted to do, then we're good. We're good to go. So we had a couple questions about how high the undercut goes. You guys can see it's just like right below the round of the head. Yeah. 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 Now what were you just spraying? So I was just going to say that, yeah. So it's, we've got the voluminous in there right now. So you just spray that right in there, working from the roots to ends. So this is kind of a thickening, volumizing yeah. spray. It's yeah. straight up, and it's a great tool to you know, really work with the hair. And how are you enjoying working with Alvinus products? They're they're incredible. They are incredible. Once you really figure out how much time and effort and love and passion they put into the science behind the products, um, it's it's it's. it's it's overwhelming. So, and what happens is, obviously, as a hairdresser, you want them to perform. And I've yet to, I've yet to use a Davin's product that hasn't performed. Yeah. Which means, obviously, they put a lot of time and effort into um, really developing the product. So. Yeah, you know, one of the ways I explain, because many years ago I owned a salon and we were a Davin's salon, and Davin's was brand new to the U.S. Um, and I had to try to explain to my clients, and I said, you know, it's an Italian company, so everything's about the ingredients, you know? And I, I do think that Davinez creates their products kind of the way Italians create their dishes, you yeah, know? absolutely. Every little ingredient, and where is it from, and is it from the right region? Yeah. It's amazing. Okay, so I'm just gonna just move this around a little bit quickly. Yeah, the brand name is Davinez. So we had someone earlier say, oh, it's, don't you pronounce it Davines? It's actually yeah. Davinez. Alvinez. Alvinez. Alright, so a little bit of the volume mist in there for hold and control and now hand drying. Yeah. Any tips here? I know some people just always go for the round brush right away. Yeah. Why, you know, why using the hand? What's the difference for you? Well, I feel like that I put I feel like I put enough texture and movement uh, that I can just use my hands and my blow dryer to just really direct that hair where I want it to. Do you do a lot of hand drying, or are you someone who, you know? I really do. I do a lot of blood drying at home. Yeah. So, um... And in the salon, my yeah, chair? Yeah. Because I think that's another one. I have clients say to me all the time, because I generally almost always work naturally, and I've had so many people say, I've never gone to the salon and, like, not had it blown out. It's the first time I've seen a, that I really? can Because I think a lot of hairdressers automatically just go to that round brush, and it's not a bad thing, but then the client just always thinks that the hair can only be that yeah. one way. Yeah, you might have a lot of women that have short hair in my, uh, in my uh, clientele, so, you know, I try to cut it so that they don't have to spend a lot of time doing it themselves. Right. And like I said, working with the blade, 
it's, it's already lived in. Yeah, you in. can see it, it created so much support already. Yeah. With the combination of the volume and then the, the blade, the hair is just, you know, standing up on its own. Yeah, and that's, and that's basically all you have to do, you know? And then, you know, it's up to the client how she wants to move it around, how she wants to style it. But here's another thing, too. I, um, what's underrated is the blow dryer. Yeah. Knowing how to you know, move that blow dryer around and how to manipulate it. Yeah, the force and the, the direction force of the and direction, exactly, you know. You know, we've recently started working with Dyson. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, man, I... You know, I, I never tried one until uh, they sent one to me, and it's just a, a really beautiful, beautiful feeling, and the way that it, you can control the air. It's, uh, it's so. yeah, it's an incredible Have you tried it? Have you tried a Dyson Bra? I have, I have. Yeah. Um, I don't know how they make that thing work, it's just... Yeah, so I've received the, um, their new, well, we'll talk about it some other time, but the newest <laughs> one is called the Air, um, it's like an Air Wrap. Oh, really? It's an iron that blows the air around. Oh, I've heard that. I've seen something, but I, I don't know exactly the whole mechanics of why that. So, again, just that grit of rubbing together, yeah. and, and you can see the product really it just kind of popped the hair right into place. So you kind of created some wave. Yeah, with your hair. exactly. Because I know she's got a little bit of kick in there, so I want that hair to have a little bit of movement, you know? I don't want it to be so perfect. Um, and also, you know, Brooke putting in that, in that lightener, and that's going to give it a little bit more structure to it as well. That always helps it to do. Was it blonde before, Crystal, or is that new? Uh, I was blonde at the end, and then... Yeah. Okay. So we just uh, we the got Brooke to kind of do the roots and break the, break the base. And it's got a nice lived-in feel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So talk to us a little bit about your wall here um, that we're huh? looking at. All this I'm surprised nobody's asked me any questions about them. Not yet. I haven't seen any. Um, well, you know, it's just over the years of collecting inspiration. Um, I'm, a, I'm such a big fan of anybody and everybody's work. And, you know, I, I work in here so often, I, was, I feel like I need something in here that just kind of just makes me look twice. And, and not only at what's happening, but I even at myself. It, it motivates and pushes me to like get myself to the next level possible. But I always say, you know, you can't you can't be creative unless you're inspired first. So you know, inspiration is key. Um, once you're inspired, then you know, sky's the limit. So, you so this is work that right? you've just over the years seen in magazines and yeah. just loved and said I want to be sure. Who know, are some of your favorites? People that keep you really inspired. Uh, hairdressing wise. Yeah. You know, I just, nowadays, especially with social media, I mean... You just find new people every day, it's right? Every yeah. day, it's like, whoa, I've never seen this person before, I've never seen her before, I've never seen, you know, so I'm constantly being inspired. You know, there's so, there's so much great work in there. You know, there's so much great work out there. Well, I mean, and it's so accessible because, as you said, social media, and, you know, I see sometimes somebody who's just been doing hair for four years put something up on Instagram and it's like mind blowing. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know. How long have you been, been doing this now? You started when you were just a teenager? Well, I went to, um, yeah, I went you know, to high school and I did a couple years of college. And, um, so I started, uh, let me see, I started, well, I started assisting it. 14. In the parent of your parents alone. Yeah, just your I mean, mother and father were hairdressers. Yeah, they worked together. Dad, yeah, mom and dad. Yeah. yeah. And like more traditional hairdressers. Like yeah. Lots of right. Mom is an amazing, amazing hairdresser. I mean, she touches hair and she can do anything to it. She is she still still doing she's it? Still doing it. Oh, that's awesome. Still, yeah, she's still still doing it. And they're so they still have a salon in Toronto. Yeah, mom still has a salon. Unfortunately, dad's not here anymore. But yeah, mom's still going at it. She's. She's pretty incredible. She, That's just, amazing. she doesn't know when to stop. We always constantly tell her, like, Mom, I think it's time to retire. But you know, she won't she won't do it. Alright, I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, our moldy play here. Looking incredible. So what are we working with now? It's a little bit of moldy I'll play. Just show this to the camera because everybody always wants to know what's being used. Yeah. This is from the more inside line. More inside, yeah. Davin has molding clay from the more inside line.
And what was the choice? Why? Why did you go with that? If you guys want to see this, you can see it's just like a nice, like molding clay, kind of dry, but not not uber dry. It's got a little bit of. Uh, and you know, with that, you can also, depending on, you know, if you want to be a little bit more, um, more of like a, not a wet feel, but more of like a, not oily either, but it, what you can do is you can apply the uh, blow dryer to it, and it kind of just melts a little bit of a moisture. Bit, it gives a little bit of moisture to it, you know? So, and then just working through the surface and just really palming it through here. Now how important is product to you? I mean, yesterday we worked with uh, Katie Butler, who doesn't like to use any product. <laughs> you know, we had to remind her, hey, don't try to put some product in there. She's like, oh, I always forget. Yeah. But like for someone like you, how important is it? I love product. Yeah, yeah I love product. I think, you know. Um, it's just like the razor or the comb or the blow dryer. Absolutely, you gotta have it, yeah. Right? You've, got, you've got to have it. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to use something that's really going to. I guess, uh, you know, really compliment what it is that you're working with, you know? So I think that that's super, super important. Yeah, it just broadens the toolbox. I yeah. mean, you've been able to change that texture and control it and really bring out your cut. Yeah, so now here we go. So it was a lot flatter up on top. It was laying a lot flatter. So now we've gone in and put in a lot of texture. You know, and then that's it. Just you can keep playing with this all day. You know, it's just gonna, it's just gonna keep moving. It's lovely the little pieces that are kind of dropping into the temple. Yeah, yeah. and I just love that because that's been all you know, spliced. And we just keep that, and then that's it. And just let it awesome. Well, it's been amazing. Thank you for welcoming us right into your uh, into your studio here. I'm gonna take this off if you're gonna do any yeah. more cutting. You wanna stand up for us, Crystal? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Crystal, for being not only a great assistant, but a great model. <laughs> thank you, Michael, for being so humble and kind and sharing. And thank you all for your support. You. And uh, look out for Michael at the Davines Worldwide Hair Tour. Uh, it's going to be in Iceland in May. I believe it's like May 5th through the 8th. As long as uh, you come to that show, you're going to be super inspired by these great artists. Thank you so so much. we'll see you soon, guys. Peace out. Thank you, everyone.